Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. Have you ever been out trolling and can't seem to keep your lines from getting tangled? Or maybe you were trolling and you were afraid to do nothing but head in a straight line for fear of them getting tangled. You didn't want to bob and weave in and out of the reef's edge to see what you could pick up the way bait naturally travels as prey fish. And in this tips and tricks episode, I'm going to go over some of the most commonly asked questions and mistakes made when trolling multiple lines, especially from a small boat. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay, so to start out, we have to say trolling takes practice. If you can get it right on the first time, you're a prodigy. When it comes to trolling on a small boat, a few things you have to keep in mind. One, you gotta plan what you're gonna do. Am I doing strictly top water trolling? Am I trolling a planer? Am I trolling a top water lure also? Am I trolling two planers? Am I trolling spoons? What am I doing? You also gotta plan how many lines you wanna troll. Am I gonna troll one line, take it easy, or am I going with multiple lines? You ask, hey, can you troll multiple lines from a small boat? You most definitely can. And you could do it in many different ways. You can go top water, you can go planers, you can go planer and top water. It's not a problem at all. You just have to keep your wits about you and know a few little good practices when it comes to proper trolling etiquette. First thing you always want to try to make sure that you do is you always want to try to have your lines at two different lengths. You want to have a long line, you want to have a short line. You very rarely want to have two lines that are set out about equidistant. If they're at equidistant, that's looking for a tangle. Long line and short line, you can turn and bob and weave and your lines won't cross. Now it comes to letting these lines out and keeping them from getting tangled when you're initially getting set up. When it comes to getting set up and initially letting your lines out, you're always gonna to wanna to let that long line out first, that shotgun line. For example, if we're doing two top water lines, we're gonna let our long line out about 200, 250 feet, and then we'll let our short line out about 100, 150 feet. So they're scattered. That way when we turn our boat, no matter which way we turn, our short line can go under our long line, no matter which way. Let's say you want to do some planer trolling. You want one line on a planer and one line up on top. What you're going to do is you're going to let that planer line out first. That's going to be your long line. You're going to let the planer line out first and then you will let out your top water line. This will help you avoid tangles. And then let's say you want to troll two planers. Well, again, you're going to have a long and a short planer. Now, when it comes to using two planers, you don't want to use the same weight planers. You want to use like a number three and a number six or a number six and a number eight. The trick to keeping multiple planers from getting tangled is to make the lighter weight smaller size planer your long shotgun line. So let's say I got a number three planer and a number six planer. My number three planer first is going in the water first and I'm letting it way out there. I'm gonna let out my main line 200 feet and then I got a hundred foot leader on top of that. Then the number six planer, I let that out and I'll let it out about a hundred feet. That's how you troll multiple planers without getting them tangled. Now, if you're on a small boat like mine and you have the capability to troll a third line, what you'll want to do is you'll let that third line out last. That will be your center line. You're going to let that out just past your prop wash, 50 to 75 feet at max. You cannot be letting it out while you are on the turn. You'll want to be heading in a straight line to let out that third line on a small boat. All right, so now we have an understanding of how to let our lines out in proper order. Long line first, short line second, prop wash line third. Now what we need to do is understand a technique of 
how to let these lines out so they don't get tangled. What we're going to do is we're going to head out on the boat. I'm going to give you an example of how to troll one line with a planer and one line up on top. The technique that I'm going to show you how to employ will work no matter if you're doing one planer and one top water, two top waters, or two planers. You're going to want to pay attention to this technique. It's very important and it will most definitely keep you from tangling your lines. six and seven knots. Got the planer set, good to go. And we got a spoon on top. Okay, so that was the basic technique of how to let out your lines without getting them tangled. Remember, you let one line out and you turn into it. And then you let out your next line, which will end up going straight back. So your lines will be headed like this. No chance of them getting tangled. The next thing that's fairly important is logistical planning of rod placement on your boat when it comes to letting out your lines. So I want to take you on a little tour of my boat and show you my thought process behind where I set my rods and which rod holders I utilize and why I do this. Alright so here we are and here's my boat. This is what I consider to be a small boat. It's a 17 foot Key West center console. So when it comes to trolling and avoiding things like tangles, on a small boat, you gotta do some logistical planning as to rod placement. So what I wanna show you is right here. Over on the starboard side of the boat, I've got a rod holder here and a rod holder at the very stern. The same on the port side. I've got a rod holder about in the center of the boat and a rod holder at the stern. On my center console, you'll also see I've installed a rod holder here and here. This doesn't mean that I use all six rod holders to troll six lines ever when I'm trolling. I will troll at max three. I do troll two rods all the time. When I'm trolling, I do not troll with my rod in the stern. I troll with it here in the center of the boat and the other one here because I'm usually standing right here where my center console is and if I have a third one out I can put it here or here. I keep these rods right next to me because when I'm trolling I have ease of getting to the rod should a fish strike. Also, it's what I told you, when you are letting out your lines, you set out your long line, your initial line and then you turn your boat towards it which will kick your line almost perpendicular to your boat and then you let out your short line on the other side. That will go straight out and then you continue on your path to troll. Okay, so that is my thought process behind the logistic planning of rod placement for me. It's simple, ease of access. I can get to the rods when a strike happens. So there you have it in a nutshell, how to avoid line tangles and get trolling. So now the question is, is I up and running, I haven't tangled my lines yet, but I'm afraid to not go in a straight line. 
Yes, trolling in a straight line does work, but it's not exactly the most natural looking thing that bait fish do. Bait fish are always bobbing and weaving and scattering over the reef's edge to avoid being eaten by predators. You need to try and simulate this while you're trolling. Keep this in mind, trolling is trying to entice the impulse to feed of a fish that is actively hunting. So. You need speed and you need to move like you're trying to get away. That way the fish hunts you down. When you're doing topwater trolling or planer trolling, in general, if you are using artificial lures, you're going to want to be doing between six and eight knots. You might think it's fast, it's not. You are not going to outrun any predator fish doing six to eight knots. One of the last things I want to mention before we close out here when you get the strike. The most important thing to remember is clear your short line first. So let's say your fish hits your short line. You will be clearing that short line because you're gonna be reeling in that fish. You can leave your long line out. You're not gonna get a tangle more than likely. If your fish hits your long line, before you pick up the long line and start retrieving it, Clear the short line, reel the short line in. If you don't, you're looking to get a hot mess of tangle because that fish can cross over and one, either cut you off or two, you're gonna end up with a tangle and you're gonna have to cut lines and re-rig. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about how to troll multiple lines on a small vessel. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing going wherever the cool wind takes us.